What up? Yo, if any of you guys have family members that live uh, close to you uh, and they have kids, you know that they kind of start to look at you like you're their babysitter, which is which is fine. I mean, you know, that's what family's for, right? I, I, I'm here to help. So uh, my cousin likes to drop off his kids some days when he can't get his babysitter or whatever, whatever issue he has with her or now that it's summertime and his kid's not going to daycare, some, you know, a few days a week, he'll drop them off here and, you know, I'll have to take care of them. And, you know, they're, they're, you know, I like them, but fuck, man, the one kid that she's almost three years old, fuck sakes, she's asked questions about everything. And like, I mean, just things you don't even have answers for, you know, like, like, you know, why is, why is that building shaped that way? Like, uh, you know, why is, why is that guy wearing black colored shoes? And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Like, figure it out for yourself, lady. Like, do you think, do you think I know? <laughs> you think I know why that guy's wearing, I, I don't fucking know. I don't know. It goes well with his fucking jeans. It goes well, it matches his shirt. I don't fucking know, man. I go ask your mom or something. Anyway, jeez, and she fucking ate my ear off today with the blah, 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 this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, and, uh, you know, constant demands, um, uh, bossing me around, you know, you know, quite frankly, I'm getting sick of it, and, uh, you know, I'm considering next time just telling him to go fuck himself when he wants to, uh, when he wants to drop his kids off. The little boy's cute, six months years old, six, six months old can't be six months years old uh, he's adorable I like him maybe maybe I'll tell him to take her annoying little ass and uh, just bring the little boy over ew, ew, ew. I should stop talking about zip zip let's uh, introduce myself uh, Milad Ascari that's my full name uh, change the name of the channel that, 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 I, a little cheesy right Lod Fader Probably, like, you know, you know, go fuck yourself if you think it's cheesy. It's not easy coming up with uh, with a name, and I don't want to come up with like a generic, like uh, you know, bet with bet with Lottie or bet with me lot or you know, something stupid like that. Like I want it to be, you know, creative, somewhat original. So let me know if if it's okay, if it's passable, Lod Fader, uh, I'm fine with that. Um, it, you know, if you just think it could be better, I, that's that's okay. I just want to know if it is like terrible like people are not gonna want to tell you just because of how bad your name is let me know in the comments below shout out to everyone that uh has been following me since the channel's name was lottie's locks you guys are great uh, a lot of you are on instagram now um so it's nice it's really, it's really nice interacting with those people that uh that have been tailing me really since the beginning uh some some administrative business to take care of here wearing repping my toronto raptors uh, shirt, please, Kawhi, please. Also, uh, repping my homeland, got to always do that. Uh, you know, it's really annoying the way all of these so-called experts are talking about, you know, this is what Kawhi is doing, that's what Kawhi is doing. Everything that's been reported about Kawhi has been wrong. They said they were going to meet, he was going to have his meeting Sunday night with the Lakers, the Clippers, and the Raptors. That didn't happen. Apparently, his meeting with the Clippers was yesterday. Apparently, he hasn't met with the Lakers or the Raptors yet, or he has met with the Lakers, not with the Raptors. Really, they have no idea what's going on. Uh, the media, American media sports talk shows in the United States are clearly pushing hard for Kawhi not to go back to Toronto uh, for networks like ESPN, a ABC, it would, uh, it, and it did reduce their ratings. Um, one of the best teams in their league being Canada. So yeah, a lot of bullshit going on. Uh, a lot of, uh, 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 what's the word? You know what politicians do. Uh, fuck man, I hate, I hate when I'm on the spot like this because then I have to think and I'm not very good on the spots. You know, when I can like type things out and have some time to think about it, I can make myself appear uh, somewhat intelligent. When I have to, uh, when I have to think on the spot, I'm that's that's really when I'm exposed. So you know what? You guys came here to uh, listen to a video about parlays, and 
four, five minutes? Really? You know what? We're going to chalk that up to, uh, to me introducing myself. The intros normally won't be this long, and I'll definitely uh, let you guys know that you can just fast forward through all this nonsense um, uh, if you just want to listen to me talk about baseball. Uh, another thing I want to get out of the way um, about uh, a play I gave out to you guys yesterday, that was uh, Royals plus one and a half. Uh, the result of the game, I mean, was awful. Made, it made me look like an idiot. Uh, but uh, so just to give you guys an idea of what I'm looking at when I'm breaking these games down. So <laughs> the line opened up um, the day before at, uh, at Blue Jays minus 120. And when I saw that, I thought, that looks about right. Both pretty shitty pitchers, slight a- advantage uh, to the one playing at home. Um, so at that point, I, I really didn't think it was a play. Uh, the next day, the line had moved up to uh, Blue Jays minus 145. Uh, at that price, um, and I think that was the price uh, most people, it looked like, it seemed like everybody picked the Blue Jays yesterday. And that, that seems to be like the price people got it. I think it ended up closing at, at 150. Um, but I think most people were getting it around 140, 145. Uh, when, it, when it went that high, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't see any reason for that. I, uh, I didn't think that the Blue Jays had that much of an advantage uh, over the Royals. Bats are definitely more explosive, but the numbers uh, uh, don't have one team clearly better than the other. Both both teams have been hitting the ball pretty well uh, lately. Uh, and then when you talk about the two pitchers, I mean, Sparkman, 5.09 ERA, 5.65 FIP, 5.64 XFIP. Uh, LOB 74%, uh, hard hit percentage uh, around 40%. And you got Richard, 6.5 FIP, XFIP at, uh, uh, his XFIP is about, wait, 6.5 FIP and ERA, uh, XFIP a little lower at 5.4, uh, LOB 70%, uh, hard, edge, hard hit percentage 53%. So those numbers actually suggest that, that uh, Richard is a little worse than Sparkman. Um, but I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't really, uh, placing the bet, uh, thinking about it that way, I was really just, I was really just looking at it and seeing two, two trash pitchers, and uh, and two you know pretty evenly matched teams. I don't have their records in front of me, but I mean I think they probably have around the same record. Um, so I, I I didn't I didn't quite see why uh, the Blue Jays were such a heavy favorite. Um, obviously, I ended up being wrong. I mean I did see. One capper who picked uh, the Blue Jays talk about how, uh, you know, there's no way the Blue Jays are going to lose on Canada today. And, you know, quite frankly, I can't I can't compete with that level of, of intuition. I mean, come on, give me a fucking break. I, that, that kind of stuff. And I know uh, this video isn't going to be about touts versus handicappers. But that's the kind of shit that, that touts will, will start to talk about. Um, you know, when they start when they start using basic logic to explain their picks, Oftentimes, there's nothing wrong with the logic. That example I just gave you, I mean, what kind of, that, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, there's no way for you to prove that. Even if you tell me the Blue Jays are undefeated uh, every day, every time they played on Canada Day, you know, at home or whatever, period, undefeated period, I wouldn't give a shit. Their team even last year was completely different than what it is this year. So, I mean, why would I care about historically how they've done? And this guy didn't even have a number like that. He just straight up said, you know, it's Canada today. There's no way the Jays are going to lose. Um, now, a lot of the times, again, I will talk about parlays in, a, in 30 seconds. Bear with me. Um, uh, a lot of the times, the logic they'll give you is sound. Like, for example, uh, you know, the Braves played... 13 innings the night before, and now it's a 1 p.m. game, and the Nats had the day off the day before, so the Braves will probably come out flat. We'll take the Nats' money line. Sound logic. Like that, that, that makes sense. What's going on with my hair? Um, that makes sense. But, like, dig deeper. Like, uh, for all, maybe the Nats are, are 0-5 when they've had a day's rest. Maybe the Braves are 5-0 and when they've played 12 innings or more the night before. You know what I mean? Like, like the logic, using that logic to do your research is great. That's great. But find numbers to back you up. Um, 
And, and when you do that, when you do that, it'll make it a lot easier for you to swallow the losses. Um, because you'll be able to look back on the numbers and say, Hey, I mean, how could I have, how could I have bet the other side based on these stats? I couldn't have, it just didn't go my way. Uh, okay. On the part, I've literally, I've been blabbing for 10 minutes. I, I'm going to, I promise these, these videos, uh, won't be this long. Okay. Parlays. So a lot of people, you know, there's some people that, uh, that, uh, say, you know, don't even touch parlays. Um, I personally don't know anybody, uh, making a living consistently betting parlays, like strictly betting parlays. Uh, I'm not naive to the fact that there might be someone out there that is, um, don't even fucking think about teasers. Don't even touch teasers. Okay. Um, now I'm, I don't really love parlays, but, but before I get into that, let me, cause I know a lot of people do them. A high percentage of casual betters do parlays, probably more are uh, parlaying than our, than our straight betting. So, uh, there definitely is a place for parlays. I, I wouldn't say that nobody should be betting. If you're in a situation where you bet on sports to make the games a little more interesting and you have an income where you are okay with uh, uh, putting down $100 a week or $50 a week, whatever whatever it is that you're a number you're comfortable with losing per week and to you, that, uh, that amount is worth it uh, losing that money is worth it because the games that you're watching become that much more exciting. If you're that type of better, then doing parlays is, is great. Uh, I have a good friend of mine. He, that's the way he parlays. And you know, one time he turned a dollar into $1,500 and booked a flight to Barcelona, went to El Clasico, you know, with that money, not too long ago, he, he threw down $20 in one $10,000. Um, so, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you're probably going to lose most weeks, but in the end, it'll all come out in the wash. And with the way he's been doing it, he, he, he uses Bet365. So, if it, you know, a couple of his couple of his picks have hit and his cash out is up at $400, $500, he'll usually just cash out. He's definitely making, you know, decent money on the side um, betting that way. A few things that he does, though. Value. Value. Do not... Minus one, higher than minus 130, don't even put it on your card. It, it, you're already paying so much juice with parlays, and I'll get into that in a second. But, but I mean, higher than minus 130, don't even put it on your card. It's not worth it. Um, dogs, don't be afraid to put dogs on. Uh, bring up the value of the parlay um, so that you can put down a little bit of money and win a lot of money. Now, the reason I say don't even think about teasers, a lot of times um, people are doing teasers in the NBA. Uh, in, the M in NBA games, a line moves so much in a game that oftentimes whatever, uh, whatever point uh, spread that you paid for, you can get in game at minus 110 or whatever. Usually you'll pay a little more juice for in, in game bets. Um, so, I mean, just, just be patient. Don't, don't pay for points. Uh, especially not in NBA basketball. Don't pay for points, period. Um, the less juice you pay, the better off you're going to be. Um, and that includes for parlays. Don't think like, don't think, oh, you know, these five teams, they're, they're, there's no way they're going to lose. Um, and you're going to put, you know, five minus 200 teams down on a parlay uh, thinking that, you know, this is a smart, profitable strategy. And I see some cappers out there um, acting as if they've come up with this, brilliant, uh, brilliant scheme to beat the books. And you know, all they're doing is parlaying favorites. Look, if it was that easy, I mean, everybody would be fucking doing it. Right. Um, uh, you know, so now, now let me get into why, uh, why I don't do parlays. They don't add up. Let me tell you uh, something a bookmaker once told me. He told me that parlays were created by bookmakers to, uh, uh, cause people who are on like a three game, four game losing streak to dig their hole even deeper, um, by providing them with this sort of, uh, way out, uh, opportunity for you to win all your money back and some on one play, knowing full well 
that the payout that they're going to give them doesn't reflect the percentage chance they have of winning and that the likelihood is they're going to go down into tilt mode. Um, so bookmakers love it. Anything, I mean, why would, why would Vegas give you the option to parlay if it didn't benefit them, right? I mean, they didn't become a multi-billion dollar industry by making it easy for you to make money. So anytime there's some, they give you some sort of promotion or some sort of, oh, well, look, we'll, we'll pay you more to do this. You know, put to, instead of betting on one play, bet on two plays. We'll give you triple what we would have given you if you just bet on the one. Um, they're not doing it because they want to help you. Uh, anyway, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to try and, uh, you know, maybe you're having success doing this. Maybe you're having, maybe you are making uh, money uh, parlaying. If you are, then you figured out a way to do it. And that's great. All the power to you. Um, that's awesome. Keep doing it. Uh, but if you, if you are struggling or if you are finding that, you know, you're hitting up, you're hitting these parlays, but you're not really uh, turning a profit, you know, when you look back over time, um, you know, start to think about it like this. Now, I want to tell you one more thing. Uh, this is this is something I heard from another bookmaker. No, sorry, from another handicapper whose father was a bookmaker. Um, he said his father told him that if someone wanted to to bet on a parlay, that he would drive to their house and pick them up. Um, and the handicapper, the son, is like, well, why? Like they have they have a, you know they could bet on whatever three underdogs and get paid out twelve to one. That's a great opportunity for them. Why would you want them to do that? And the bookmaker, the, the father says, uh, yeah, but I only need one team to win and I win or one of his teams to lose and I win. He needs three. He needs three things to happen. I just need one. Okay, so now flip that on to yourself. You know, you're with your friends, right? One of you guys has to pick three teams with the spread, three teams at minus one time. My hair looks, my hair looks a lot better now. It's going to fall back and look awful in a second. Hey, I like that. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, flip that onto yourself. Uh, you, you're with your friends. Um, one of you has to pick three teams with the spread. You win $10. If he gets one team wrong, he wins 60. If he gets all three, you don't even have to do any research. You just fucking chill. Uh, you just have to hope he gets one pick wrong. Now, um, what, uh, where, where are my notes about, uh, fucking the odds? I, I guess I didn't write any notes about them. Um, one thing, one other thing I wanted to say about my posts is, uh, oh, I did, I do have a little note here. Um, yeah, anyway, sh shut up, get to the point. Um, I want to say something about my posts on Instagram and stuff. I'm sorry if I'm patronizing or anything. Um, I'm an opinionated person. Uh, even though I'm opinionated, there's there's nothing that I believe in so strongly that that I won't listen to someone else. Come to me, hit me with facts about why I'm wrong about something, and I, I'm I'll listen. You know, I'm very open minded. You know, I definitely do come off as opinionated. I am opinionated. My, it annoys my friends. It annoys my family. So you're not the only ones. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, I definitely don't mean to come off that way. Uh, and, and I know a lot of you know a lot of the stuff I'm talking about already. Just know that there are a lot of people that don't as well. So I am helping some people out. If I wasn't, if I wasn't getting, uh, you know, a positive response from some people when I, when I'm giving out advice, then I, just, I would stop doing it because I mean, what's the point? I don't want to annoy you guys. I don't want to patronize you guys. So, uh, yeah, just, just so you guys know when I'm, when I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying my opinion. I'm not saying it as if, the, as if it's fact, even if it may sound, even if it, I may sound uh, that way. Uh, yeah. So let me break down the numbers. So, uh, based on the probability of you hitting a, a, a game at minus 110, the probabilities are supposed to be, you know, in theory, 50% that you're going to hit it. If you're taking a, a Celtics plus six and a half or Warriors minus six and a half. The theory is you have a 50, you have, it's a coin flip, which one's going to hit. Okay. So based on, on those probabilities, you have a four to one chance of hitting a parlay, but the payout is only 3.6 or 3.7, depending on what book you use. 
you put in three, the chances of you of hitting it are seven to one, but your parlay payout is like 6.1, right? And with each added selection to your parlay, the difference between the payout and the actual percentage chance you have of winning just keeps getting bigger. And with time, that's going to catch up to you. Uh, so now when you, when you, now when you uh, include uh, taking teams at minus 200 where you're already paying all kinds of juice, minus 250, I see some people with parlays at minus 300, minus 350, and then they complain like, oh, the, the minus 300 uh, favorite blew my parlay, shit, as if like, as if it wasn't their fault that, that the minus 300 favorite blew it. Like, why do you have a minus 300 favorite on there? Was it worth it? It's not. It's not. So um, if you're going to parlay, make sure you're finding value. Um, don't be afraid to throw dogs on there. Um, and when you do it that way, you, you, you do kind of put Vegas at a risk because if you're putting down $10 to win $10,000 or whatever, $20 to win $10,000. Now Vegas is a little scared. These are, these are the kinds of things that they don't want because now they have a lot to lose. $20 and you know, what's $20, but they could lose 10 Gs, right? So yeah, make sure, make sure you're finding value with your parlays. Uh, don't do teasers. Don't buy points. Minus 130 is the, uh, the most juice you should pay in a fucking course my tablet runs out of battery right i wanted to give you guys a free play uh this is a play um that i've given to my subscribers but i'm gonna give it to everybody that uh that sat through this long ass fucking video so sorry about that i'll, I'll try and keep them uh, shorter in the future uh, so i'm just gonna go quickly to my to my notes here so i can because i want to hit you guys with, with a few stats uh just so you know why uh why I'm, I'm taking this pick like it's just a good idea about why the angle from which I'm taking the pick um, going under 11 runs uh, angels Rangers uh, angels 18 19 and 5 to the under on the road Texas is 19 and 24 to the under at home both teams hitting percentage falls significantly when facing left-handed pitchers um, neither team has a great bullpen so why not go uh, first five under six well, at six, we're going to get slightly less runs per inning than we would 10 and a half, or sorry, 11 and, and nine, slightly less runs per inning than six at, at five. Um, plus, both teams are scoring a little more on average in the first five innings than they are in the bottom four. Plus, Texas is a minus 145 favorite in this game. So if it plays out that way, uh, there's a good chance we don't even see the bottom of the ninth. So that would be uh, under 11 runs in, in eight and a half innings, possibly. So, I, you know, I see that as a very favorable, favorable number based on um, the trends uh, these, two, these two teams have against the under um, and, uh, and the pitchers that they'll be facing. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Um, I don't give a fuck. Uh, just want to know how, how people, what people think. Um, if I sound like an idiot, if I'm if I'm helpful, if I should stop doing this, uh, feedback is great. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to interacting with you guys. Thanks for listening.